everybody, Spider here, the Five Card Podcast, coming to you from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, being joined today by Roger Narvaez out of Corpus Christi. My man, how are you, bro? I'm doing great, brother. I'm doing great. It's uh, good to uh, catch up with you today. Oh, no, by all means, bro. I know I hit you up a while back, man, and uh, scheduling conflicts, but um, man, you're a busy man, bro. So right off the bat, i got to ask you, man, when do you have time to do anything, man? Yeah, it's... Uh... It's far and few in between, actually, man. You know, the older I get, the more I realize how important it is to uh, focus on on what is important and less on uh, leisure type stuff. So, you know, uh, between, uh, you know, my family and, and uh, helping at the gym, doing my, my part as a coach, uh, running the jiu-jitsu program there and then uh, starting up my podcast uh, and then working for the fire department full time. Uh, between all that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I stay pretty busy. No, no, for sure, man. And I mean, right off the bat, man, I wanted to ask because uh, when you first made your your uh, entrance into the uh, mixed martial arts world, man, I believe I was the first guy to interview you. I might be wrong. Yeah, I mean, I had a little, a few smaller um, um, interviews. You know, you know, one, my thing was, uh, you know, I started out in jujitsu. And uh, you were actually one of the first guys to reach out and put me on this type of platform. So nothing but love and, and always uh, let everybody know about the uh, podcast because, you know, you, you do a great job of just uh, trying to bring that undiscovered talent to the forefront. And, uh, you know, I think that's super important. I think a lot of times people like to see uh, only only the people that are really out there doing the bigger things and, and making the bigger name for themselves, but they don't realize that those guys all started somewhere. So I, I think it's real cool when you, you bring on these up and coming fighters on the show, because, you know, it's just a matter of time uh, before, you know, these guys break through and then uh, everybody wants to be on the bandwagon. So, you know, props to you for, for showing interest from the beginning and, and not being like uh, all the other guys out there. No, no, by all means, bro. And I appreciate you guys jumping on this. I mean, whether you're an amateur or pro, I mean, uh, I know you guys are always busy. You guys are always, you know, training and everything else. So uh, it works both ways, man. I mean, I'm definitely uh, glad that you guys are able to jump on this platform. Uh, but, bro, I mean, right off the bat, man, I mean, you are a uh, black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, of course. You, you've been uh, teaching for, for how long right now? I mean, because I know you just started teaching at Weapons at Hand. But were you teaching before, bro? Yeah, well, I, I started teaching before that with under my coach, Hector Munoz, um, pretty early on. I mean, I, I would pick up a few classes, beginner classes as a blue belt. And then, you know, as I advanced through the ranks, purple belt, brown belt, my coaching duties kind of became more and more with jujitsu. Uh, and then, you know, of course, in the MMA side of things as well. Um, and then it, it wasn't until uh, 2016 that I started my own program. And that was merely just because it was it was too hard, you know, to uh, travel from. I would basically have to teach at my my gym, Full Contact Fight Academy, um, and then I would have to haul ass all the way over to uh, Weapons at Hand and try to make the classes. And and you know, after sitting down with my coach at the time, he understood, um, you know, uh, what I wanted to do. I'd always told him that I envisioned running my own program at some point. Um, and it was just the right, right place, right time. You know, I was over there. I was still trying to fight. Um, I was working my kickboxing. And so at weapons at hand, you know, that's where most of the sparring went down. And, um, you know, it just one thing led to the next. And, and you know, we're going on. Uh, shoot, man, I just realized, like, yeah, it's 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 going on six years uh, here pretty soon. So um, it's it's growing. The, the team is great. And you know, this is, uh, I'm glad this is dire the direction I took because uh, it's been very fulfilling to to have my own program and, and help people as much as I can on uh, not only jiu-jitsu, but just with any, you know, life tips and, and experiences that I have as well. No, and I, I got to ask, bro, as an instructor yourself, I mean, putting yourself in that situation, say uh, one of your students comes up to you and they're like, hey, I want to start my own program. I mean, of course, get your blessing. I mean, that that's kind of cool, right? I mean, you gotta you gotta admit that's kind of like a saying a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is, man. Um, you know, my thing is, I, I'm big on loyalty, and I'm big on on um, not doing anything shady. I think things get done the wrong way. Um, I currently have a couple students under my belt that that want to um, someday have their own program, and that I I, I see them having their own program someday. Um, you know, but I tell them, you know, just learn from me what you can, um, 
and and never never you know um never sell yourself short by starting too early i think i think there's a big thing right now where people get promoted um especially at the black belt level and they feel like oh i'm ready to start a gym or i'm I, there's so much more that goes to it um i don't care if you're world class um, black belt or competitor or MMA fighter. Uh, there's a lot that goes into um, actually running a program, running a business, knowing how to handle certain clients, knowing how to handle students. What people don't realize is, is being a coach is so much more than just coaching jujitsu. Being a coach, I get calls all hours of the night. I've, I've literally... Um, you know, um, help students out financially. I've helped students out. Um, just, you know, there's a lot of stories that, that not everybody hears because when a student comes to me one-on-one -on -one and tells me their problems, I mean, a lot of coaches are, are, are like therapists in a sense. And I just feel like sometimes people don't understand the responsibility that goes along with being a coach. Um, and so I tell my students, like, trust me, like I, want them to succeed a hundred percent but i always tell them like wait until you're ready um you know don't don't uh take from me everything that you can because i'm not only going to teach you jujitsu i'm going to teach you how to be a business person i'm going to teach you how to uh, kind of like what i'm doing with the fighters right now you know how, how to market yourself i'm going to teach you what you need to do to start a gym um and, and with all of that when it's time to go then absolutely have my blessing now now I, I hope that they would all want to remain in, affiliated with me you know um at some point um you know i i want them to start their own gym under their own name but always you know have that tie to narvice jiu-jitsu um you know i i believe in in loyalty as in that um, I also believe that, you know, when you do decide to open up a gym, don't move down the street from me like some asshole, you know, don't move, don't move a, a, a mile down the road and start poaching students. I've literally heard stories of people leaving certain instructors and literally calling the students um, and, and trying to badmouth them and tell them to um, come to their gym. You know, one thing that I always promised, uh, and one thing that I'm proud of myself for doing is, is uh, when I left my gym, my team to go start my own program, I didn't tell one person to come with me. I never tried to poach anybody. I never, you know, I literally started the program at Weapons at Hand with a group of fighters that were already there. That's literally the, the clientele that I had. Um, so it's cool to see what I have now. In, in the short time that we've been because now it's kind of the opposite now i have fighters but where it used to be my jujitsu students were 90 percent of uh, were 90 percent fighters now it's like i've got maybe 10 15 percent that are fighters and everybody else is just people that purely love to do jujitsu so you know, it, it went well. Um, you know, there's always going to be, you know, I'm going to be honest. I don't like to bullshit or sugarcoat. You know, feelings always end up getting hurt at times um, when, when you know, moves have to be made. Um, people will always talk shit on your name and say, you know, um, you know, bad things about you as to why you moved. But one thing I'm damn proud of is I never bashed anybody um, that said anything bad about me when I did leave. Um and there were some people that were very close to me that, that you know, made assumptions and that uh, didn't know the whole story and decided to, you know, run their mouth a little bit. And you know what? I didn't hold any ill will towards them. I just, I just kept it all in. I did my thing. I focused on my goals. And now, you know, I can say that, that it all paid off because putting all that energy positive energy into the gym has really grown our our team and uh I, i'm i'm very proud of what we have going on at uh, weapons at hand and our vice jiu-jitsu right now no for sure man one of the things that i like man that you you've been doing for for a while already is getting the other gen, uh, teams and it's corpus christi involved you know cross training uh you know being able to go out there to another another academy and and work out man i mean i think that's cool because that's where where everybody grows right i mean you get to roll with different people yeah 
Yeah, unfortunately, man, you know, there's there was a stigma years ago, and, and it was like we were a bunch of gangs here in Corpus Christi when I first started. Everybody hated everybody. Um, nobody would uh, want to cross-train anywhere. And I, I really give my coach, Hector Munoz, a lot of props because I remember, you know, when I started um, progressing in jiu-jitsu and I started competing a lot, I wanted to seek out as much as many high level guys, as many competitors uh, as I could. And he, you know, gave me his blessing to cro cross train. And, and, um, you know, I tell anybody now I say, Hey, I don't mind anybody coming to our gym. We have an open door policy. If you want to come cross train, make sure it's cool with your coach, because there are still some coaches, um, that, that are against it. And there's some coaches that say they're not, but they really are. And, uh, right. Well, I always tell my students, look, I ain't, I ain't trying to start any beef. We have a great thing going. I have a great relationship with Presa uh, Jiu-Jitsu, our Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here in Corpus. Um, you know, we we cross-train regularly with guys from Gracie Baja, uh, Presa, um, you know, Half Shell. Uh, there, there's there's numerous teams that, that frequently stop in to our gym to get training in. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, I, I truly feel like there's a lot of people that are scared to really take that step. They're scared to get um, exposed. Uh, but like I tell my students, man, what happens in practice doesn't matter. You know, it, it's how you perform on the big stage. Um, if I can smash everybody and I'm not constantly seeking out different looks and, and trying to find somebody to really challenge me, then I'm going to get exposed at some point and, and uh, I'm never going to grow. Uh, there's a lot of people that like to pat themselves on their back. There's a lot of people that like to go out there and, and, and you know, build their own egos and build their own heads up within their gym and don't realize that you're not as good as, as what you think. And, and I've always, I've always had the mindset that I don't want to be the best in Corpus. I, I, I don't want to be the best in Texas. I want to be recognized on like a national or a worldwide level. You know, I, I want to compete against the best uh, in the world. And, um, you know, doing jujitsu, you know, you, you see that a lot. You see a lot of guys that, that are content with winning, you know, Nagas. And, and there's nothing wrong with those. You know, I mean, everybody's done Naga before. Everybody's done some of these smaller tournaments. But, you know, when it comes to really um, being proud and, and, and standing up and setting yourself apart, it's it's the bigger tournaments. It's the sub submission only um, championship belts that you're winning. It's the it's the IBJJF podiums that you're standing on. And the only way to be successful at that level is to seek out the absolute best competition locally. And not only that, I tell my students all the time, travel. You know, I have students that go to Ch Jordan Holy's gym um, uh, and frequent his gym to, to get some work in over there. So shout out to the Holy Grail up in Victoria. Um, I know myself, like when I, when I trained, it's been a little bit now because I've, I've been super busy, but you know, I'm, I'm going to Travis Took's gym, uh, up there in Houston. I visit 10th planet, um, Austin, Gracie Humaita, Austin, you know, so like, I, I try to set the example for my students by, by being out there and not being afraid to put myself out there as a coach, you know, in front of everybody, if anybody should be afraid of challenging themselves and being embarrassed, it's me, you know, because if I go to a gym and I get tapped, of course there, somebody's going to run their mouths, but it's like, I, I don't care because I have a, a wall full of medals. I have, I have, I have my accomplishments. I know what I can do. And, you know, I, I tell the students that the, the, the uh, training room is your laboratory. That's your, your opportunity to try different things and to, and, and to, um, you know, play with your game and put yourself in bad positions. Um, nobody wins medals after leaving the competition floor. And if you're one of those guys that brag about, oh, I tap this guy or I tap that guy in competition, but you won't go and test your medal in, in um, or, uh, or I'm sorry, you tap this guy in, in practice, but you won't go test your medal in competition, then, you know, you're just a little bitch. I mean, I'm sorry. I, we can cuss on here, right? I'm, okay. I just want to, I just want to make sure I think twice about it. Oh, I got a bad mouth, man. You got to forgive me. I'm a firefighter and we don't, uh, we don't, uh, uh, talk to cleanest. So, but, uh, yeah, man. So, so I'm always 
trying to promote the cross training and, and, you know, some of my guys like, uh, Peter Caballero, um, uh, Wes Knapp, uh, you know, they trained with Leo. Uh, they started with Leo before I was there at weapons and, and, you know, so, so they train with Leo Cantu at Gracie Baja and then, you know, they come and they do their striking with us and they're more than welcome. I never, you know, I don't charge them any different. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I still give them the same effort as a coach um, because we're all a team trying to be bigger than, than just Corpus. You know, I really want to help these guys get to that next level. And, and man, I know what I've done. I ain't got no ego. I'm not trying to be the best, uh, the best jujitsu team in Corpus. I'm just simply trying to be the best coach I can be, you know? No, yeah, and like uh, like you mentioned earlier, man, the fact that you put yourself out there. I mean, when it goes to practice, there's a there's a that's a I want to say like a law. There's a, a little something like we don't, and it's true because you go to practice and you go to a gym and you get tapped out and people start bragging about it. I mean, it's practice. It's a, but that's the opportunity, like you said, for us to put ourselves in in bad positions to to go against people that hey, you know this guy's a better wrestler. Let me let me go against this guy and. The, the guys that do that, they run off and, and start posting or even maybe even start putting on social media, man. I, I, I hate when I see that because it just shows what, what kind of person they are, you know, because it is practice, bro. So, yeah, that's a good point, man. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I haven't seen it in a while, but it's happened before where people start boasting like, oh, man, I tapped that guy out in practice. And I'm like, dude, it's practice, bro. Like, man, you know? I, tell, <laughs> I tell my students all the time, I say, whatever happens, wherever it happens. I mean, I have students that go to other gyms and tap out black belts. I have black belts that come to my gym and get tapped by my students. I, I will never say who they are. I will never brag about it. I will never boast about it. Cause like I tell my students, I say, you know, I don't care who you're tapping, what, you know, in the gym, it's, it's what you do out there. You start winning medals on the world stage. You start, you know, you, you win a world championship. Um, you know, that's, that's what you should be bragging about. Not, not, you know, what happens in the practice room. Everybody has an off day. And if you train regular regularly, you're going to have an off day. So there's no point there. There's no point in, in bragging about, oh, I caught this black belt once or I, I smoked this guy. Like, no. And, and, and my students will never, ever disrespect another um, another coach, another instructor, uh, because, you know, I, I try to set the tone for that. And they know that if they ha if they do, there's going to be re repercussions to pay. I mean, I'm I'm. Uh, you know, my competitors are, are the ones that are the higher level guys. And so if they, you know, cross those lines then they are going to have to pay their dues with me and it's not going to be fun. So they understand that they respect me. Um, you know, I'm still the gatekeeper at the gym. I'm still the biggest, the baddest. And, you know, so so if I have to put it down, I will. But when it comes down to it, you know, um, luckily enough, I've ingrained in them. Um, I've got good people there. And so they, they understand the mindset of just humbling yourself and and uh you know not uh bragging about stupid shit like that no no definitely man and that's great man i mean of course we got to lead by example so you're doing just that i'm sure uh your students are doing that they're following um exactly in your footsteps man now let me ask you earlier you mentioned i mean you do work for the uh, corpus christi fire department and i gotta that's ask true. bro everybody's complaining about the heat but uh tell me how it is for you guys out there with this heat and all the the gear you guys gotta wear man I'm sorry. What I'm, I'm getting a charger, and my girl's over here thinking that I'm trying to like get her on camera. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just getting a charger, baby. Phone's dying. No. Uh, so, what are you saying about the fire department? I apologize. No, oh, I mean, as far as the heat, man, here in Texas, I mean, here in San Antonio, oh, yeah. we hit 100. But you guys are out there wearing the full gear, man. So, how hot yeah, is it, it for you guys? It, yeah, it's been hot. Uh, it's been it's been real hot. Um, unfortunately, here we've been getting a lot of brush fires lately, and that's uh, that's never a, a fun thing. Um, let me turn you a little bit. That's never a fun thing, and you know, um, especially down here, we've had a lot of uh, brush fires lately, and 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 uh, you know, it's hot enough when you are out there in 110 degree weather, but when you're catching. Uh, brush fires and you got your pants on and then you you know we have brush coats but uh you know it, it's it's not it's not good um luckily you know we we try to remain hydrated we try to um take care of ourselves and that seems to to help a lot um but man i tell you what like we had some guys fighting a, a brush fire the other day for six hours i was on the medic unit so i was just standing by um in case anybody went down but 
and luckily nobody did. But, um, you know, it, it is difficult. It's not an easy thing to do. And, uh, you know, we're dealing with the heat the best we can. We're from South Texas, so we know, you know, we know what to expect. Um, but, yeah, like you guys, we've been hitting 110, um, you know, uh, heat index. Uh, I think today it's like 100 degrees outside. So, you know, it's it's tough. But, um, you know, you, you, you know how to prepare for that. You try to do your best at staying hydrated uh, and, and uh, you know, kind of go from there. No, no, by all means, bro. And, of course, I know, I know you have a class you got to do later on today, man. But let me ask you real quick. Uh, as far as competition, man, you stayed out there. You've been putting testing your skills. Uh, you'll be testing your skills again for uh, Texas Cash Wrestling Coalition, man. So tell us a little bit about that, bro. Yeah, man, it, it was a, it was a good. It's it's a really great event, man. The first time that I did it, I was super super happy with it. Um, I, I was, to be honest with you, I was surprised. I wasn't sure how it would would go. You know, it's a, the, it was a, a the first event that I'd been part of of theirs, so I didn't know what to expect, but. Uh, Chris Flores is doing a hell of a job with it. Um, I think the format is interesting. It's it's fun. It's different. That's why I like to do it. It mixes a little bit of cage wrestling in there, um, you know. So I'm not necessarily punching people in the face, but I'm 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 getting that little taste of being in the cage again and getting to do takedowns and work my uh, clinch game and and defend takedowns and use the cage as a as a tool to help me with my with my um, you know, attacking and, and then also being the, the point game, the point system is different. You know, I can't just lay on my guard. I, I, I lay there with my shoulders. You know, I felt bad because my last match against CJ Hancock, uh, he kind of forgot and he was laying there on his back and they gave him a quick three. And then I got up. I was like, shit, man, really? Like, I don't I don't want to win like that. And I didn't. We had a great match. Um, CJ is always a, a real tough guy to finish. Um, I thought I was going to break his arm at one point and you know, maybe I should have because he didn't uh, he didn't want to tap, man. And and he was being stubborn as hell. But, you know, um, it was a good match. It was fun. Um, and I'm excited to do this next one, uh, August 20th. No, for sure, man. And are you going to have any of your students uh, participating in that as well? Or is it just yourself? Yeah, I've got I've got a, one of my assistant instructors, Josh Leonard. He's actually the sub 100 pro 170 pound um, champ at Purple Belt. Um, I believe. So, you know, I want him to uh, step up. Um, he is probably one of the, he's probably one of the uh, best unknown talents that's really out there. I see a lot of guys that are getting on these uh, third coast or not third coast, but what was that other one that they did? Anyway, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, competitions that he's applying for and not really getting picked for. And, uh, you know, the kid's quiet. He's uh, a jujitsu nerd. Uh, all he does is jujitsu and he loves it with a passion. He has a brain unlike anybody that I've ever um, come across as far as how he breaks down um, things. Uh, he literally studies film. Um, so he's not just watching matches. He's actually studying the matches. Uh, I call him a nerd because he can name everybody out there. I mean, anybody. I mean, there's, you know, I, I remember at one point I was like that. Now I've kind of. Oh, I think I lost you, boss. Let me see. Are you still there, bro? Yeah, there you go. You got me. Sorry, man. These damn spam emails. No, no, you're fine, man. <laughs> but yeah, yeah they, they were saying this one. Yeah, yeah. You know, Josh is a, a great competitor, and uh, I'm super, super excited for what he has uh, in his future. So we're trying to get him on there. Um, I know I told Christopher, I don't care, brown, black, it doesn't matter. He, uh, he just wants to compete. So we're looking to get him back on and um then i have a couple other students that are uh, applied but they haven't been able to find any matches so we'll see we'll see what uh what chris can work out for us no for sure man and let me let me end this interview with a question bro uh when yeah, it comes yeah. to when it comes to horror movies man what movie did you grow up uh watching as a kid man that frightened you bro or gave well, you nightmares should i say 
man, honestly, the one movie, because I love scary movies growing up. I mean, I watched all of them, Amityville Horror, you know, all your Freddies, your Jasons, Michael Myers. Those are kind of like my favorite ones to watch. But the one that really scared the shit out of me is uh, The Exorcist. The Exorcist, oh. I literally, I was uh, 12 years old when I when I saw some of it. I couldn't even watch the whole thing. I think I got about 20 minutes in, and then um, I couldn't watch it, and I had nightmares for, like, two weeks. Uh, I remember having to go and sleep on the floor of my, my mom's bedroom because I was so damn scared of that that movie after that. So, um yeah, I'm a, I'm a big horror fan, but, I, you know, anything to do with the devil, man, I believe in, in good and I believe in evil. So uh, anything to do with the devil always kind of gives me the, the cuckoos. So I uh, that that was the one that really did it for me. You see, man, I have a, the movie poster in the background, man. But I got to ask you, if you had an opportunity to come out in the horror movie, would you play the good guy or the bad guy? Oh, I definitely play the good guy, man. I'm an asshole on on Facebook. I always I always tease my my wife, uh, my fiance about that. Um, I'm I'm an asshole on Facebook, but I got a heart of gold, and and I really uh, am always trying to help people out when I can. Um, but I'm I'm also one of those guys that's quick to put you in your place. So I think I'd be that that superhero the, the or that um, that good guy that is kind of on the edge. Um, you know, not not necessarily the the uh, the square straight narrow guy, but the uh, the the good guy that's got a little uh, bad boy in him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir, my man. Well, I do thank you, bro, uh, for taking time for this. Of course, plug in your uh, your podcast platform as well. Yeah, brother. Uh, for anybody that's uh, interested, man, I, I got a real cool podcast that we started up. It's called Charge the Line. Um, that's kind of what we say before we go into a fire. Uh, we, t- we we have to have a charge line. So I, I named it charge the line um, and it's myself. And then um, one of my buddies who's a fire chief in the department with me. Um, it, you can find us on Instagram under charge the T H a line uh, or we have our um, Facebook page, which is just charge the line uh, podcast. And uh, you know, it's growing. We talk about everything on that. It's not just a firefighter podcast. Um, we we talk about uh, real life events. We talk about firefighting stuff. We talk about fighting. We talk about nutrition. Um, I kind of wanted to take a, a wider scale approach. I didn't want to focus just on firefighting. I didn't want to focus just on fighting. I wanted to, you know, just something where I could, uh, you know, talk about everything on. And uh, it's picking up some traction. We've only been going for about, uh, less than a month now, but uh, it's picking up some traction, and we're we're uh, real happy with the progress. So if you guys can check it out, Charge the Line podcast. You can find us on Amazon Music, Spotify, or uh, Apple Podcast. Uh, just type it in, and you'll see uh, you'll see our logo there. No, for sure, man. And I've been I've been listening, man. So definitely, you guys are doing a great job. I enjoy it. I love doing this just because uh, I keep I keep telling people it's like therapy. You're able to talk to people. And you talk about things, you know, things maybe you want to talk about, you know, get off your chest and uh, go about your day, man. But I appreciate that. And uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of you. I'm still I'm still a fan of yourself, man. And uh, these guys out there trying to make a name for themselves. But uh, I thank you for this, man. Anybody you want to thank before we wrap this up, bro? Uh, man, I just want to thank, uh, you know, my my family. They, they have to put up with this. Uh, you know, uh, they have to put up with me uh, doing what I do. You know, my fiance, she's not into fighting at all. <laughs> she supports me, but she doesn't like watching people get punched in the face. So this is something totally uh, new for her. Um, but she is 100% uh, supportive in everything I do, um, you know, from from my firefighting to the podcast to the gym stuff. Uh, she goes to the fight, supports all the guys, um, has, you know, runs errands for me when I need her to. So, you know, first and foremost, you know, her, and then of course the kids, I, I've got a stepdaughter and then my daughter and, you know, there's times where I, I'm not here at night or they have to wait on me to eat before they get home. And I always tell them no, but you know, uh, we like to eat as a family together. And, and, uh, so that, that's a big, a big, uh, support system for me. And then just, you know, everybody at the gym, man. Um, I, I always tell people when you join our gym, you're not just joining a gym, you're joining a, a family. And, um, I, I mean that, you know, I, I, there's people that um, are part of my gym 
uh, that are part of my coaching staff that help run the front desk that, that I, I would in the middle of the night just jump up and, and, and go for if, if they needed me. Um, and I know they do the same. Uh, so, you know, I think my team um, and, and, you know, they, they play a big part in, in motivating me to continue down my path and to continue um, competing. And then um, also just they inspire me in more ways than, than they realize, you know, the, the, the different stories uh, of adversity and overcoming that, that, that some of these students have is, is pretty amazing. So, you know, I just thank them for that. And, and uh, just thank you to everybody that supports us. You know, and I say us, I mean, Weapons at Hand family, the Nervice Jiu-Jitsu family. We have too many people to name, um, you know, uh, that, that are out there and that believe in us, that believe in our abilities from friends to sponsors, to, to family, to strangers that, uh, you know, subscribe to us. Uh, to what that watch our stuff that are always, you know, I, I, I've had, you know, members from other gyms uh, sponsor some of my fighters just because they're that supportive. You know, we talk about cross training and stuff and it's like, man, I literally just had um, a student of my buddy Aurelio's uh, from Presa uh, sponsor two of the guys, you know, um, and she's got a small business and, and, you know, so shout out to Ashley Cummings over there. Um, for doing that because you know she's she's at a different gym she could have helped somebody else but she's trying to help this local talent in, in the fight game and so shout out to her and, and to everybody else that that you know uh helps our gym out we got a lot of people within the gym that uh see the guys struggles and see the guys efforts and are behind them 110 percent so you know uh without without that support um, it'd be a little hard for these guys to be able to do and train uh, in some of the situations they have. So, you know, we just want to say thank you to all of them. But, uh, and then of course, thank you to the fighter podcast, man. You guys are out there, you know, uh, plugging us and, and putting us out there and still getting us exposure and still, still uh, finding uh, interest in a uh, old has been uh you know, ex UFC fighters. So <laughs> shout out to you, brother. The fight card podcast is always, uh, always on my playlist. No, no, for sure, man. And I appreciate everything you do, man. I mean, being a firefighter out there, of course, you know, I mean, there's things that happen and you guys are the first one to, to jump in. So thank you and everybody else, uh, all the first responders, of course, uh, everybody out there, Roger Navias. Thank you, bro. I will be catching up with you soon. Everybody out there, of course, this is fight at the fight card podcast. Till next time.